So for our first confidence interval of the population, uh, population mean uh, with the standard deviation known. Uh, so let's try to do this with pH stat for the example on the 20th slide. So let me start sharing the screen with you. Okay, so what we'll do basically is I want to run over here to the add-ins portion and go down to confidence intervals and we have various different options, you can see. So I'll choose the estimate for the mean sigma known option right there. So I'll have to enter the population standard deviation and make sure I'm entering 0 0.35 using the dot, because if I use the comma, it won't understand. You can change the confidence level. So, uh, so sample size in our example was 11 and sample mean in our example was 2.20. Again, make sure you use the dot, the decimal separator is a bit of a concern in pH stat. Okay, so, and the next option we could use if the sample statistics were unknown and that makes use of the T distribution. So let's say, okay, all right. So what we have here is a summary of what we gave to pH stat and we have intermediate calculations. The nice thing is here, if you go inside, you can see the actual calculation. So it does take B4, which is the standard deviation of population divides by square root of the sample size. And you can see that, all right. And it calculates the Z value using the norm.s.in. Okay, so uh, you can also replicate this easily uh, with your regular version of Excel, even if you don't have the pH stat. So what, the, what it does here is it calculates one minus B7 confidence level, so that's significance level 0, 0.05 divided by two and the norm standard normal inverse function, it gives us the critical value as minus 1.96. And it calculates the interval half width, okay, uh, using the confidence dot norm function, which is also an available function in Excel, but you could have done that simply by multiplying, uh, multiplying the standard error with 1.96. So it's just multiplication of uh, B10 and B11. Okay. And basically, or you could use the confidence.norm function or just multiply these two values together. Okay. So then what it does is calculates the interval lower limit, 199 B5 minus B12. This error, okay, and this is the mean. Uh, this is the mean, sorry, B5 minus B12 and B5 plus B12. Okay, so that's again one way we could do, uh, we could do, uh, we could calculate confidence interval. Since we have the template right here, we can simply make the confidence level equal to 99 and see what happens. Okay. So for 95, the interval is from 199 to 241, but for 99, it grows a bit, it grows larger, okay? The interval half width grows larger, the critical value grows, or we can make it smaller. So let's make it 90% confidence. And now you see the confidence interval actually narrows down 2.03 to 237. So let me bring it back to 95 over here and let me get back to you guys 